Hello and welcome back to the Toolkit for Traders YouTube channel uh, where we give you the tools for trading success and today we're back on uh, in a new edition of our Code Your Own EAs uh, series where we're teaching you uh, the MQL4 programming language and this is lesson number four of the series and uh, let's get going. So we're carrying on our coding building blocks uh, from last week's lesson, which we covered uh, variables. Um, so fourth lesson, our expert advisor course, we'll be recapping on those and doing some other things. So in today's video, uh, part two of the building blocks, we'll do a recap on the variables. We'll look at functions, how we create functions and how I see them really as factories where you have an input, it churns a process and you get outputs. We'll also look, now that we've got functions, we'll look at the differences between uh, global and local variables um, when you're writing your code. It'll all become clear soon. So the quote for this lesson, um, computer science is not just for, the, for smart nerds in hoodies coding in basements. Coding is extremely creative and is an integral part of almost every industry. And that's really what I think um, about coding, it is a creative process. Um, so it might look boring and nerdy to a lot of people, but um, what you'll find as you start to do this, that you're actually engaging the creative parts of your brain to solve problems, which is which is really fun. So we're just gonna do a recap on variables because we covered quite a lot in the last lesson. I am trying to go quite slowly on this course because I wanna make sure that everybody comes along for the ride. So we're going to go over variables again. Uh, so just quickly, variables are storage containers on your computer to hold important information. That's why I used the image of the box in the last one. It's like a, a box that you put some data in that you can then pull that box from the shelf anytime you need it. Um, variables must be a specific type depending on the type of data they hold. So, you know, you create a variable, you've got to tell the computer what kind of data you're going to put inside it and um, so it knows what it what's coming its way. Um, the computer doesn't like if you try and put the wrong uh, type of variable, the wrong type of data into, into a variable. So um, the four main types, and there are lots more, um, and you you know you you can look them up if you want to see them. But the four ones that you use you know most commonly is double, which is for any number really, um, but numbers with a decimal place. So anything where you've got a decimal place, you've got um, fractions of a number, and you're not using whole numbers, you can use a double. Int, uh, short for integer, is for discrete whole numbers with no decimal places so it will not accept any decimal places in those numbers and it may round your numbers up or down um, if you try and use a fractional number uh, with an int so int is for any number that's not going to have a decimal place in it um, string is a variable that can hold text in between double speech marks so if you want to hold a name or um, a comment or a message, anything that's text, you put it in a string. And bool, which is short for boolean, um, can hold either true or false, written just like that, true or false. Um, and then once you've got your type of your variable sorted, uh, you need to name your variable. And you know, get into the habit of writing, naming your variables in something that makes sense to you. Don't give them coded names. You're not saving. It doesn't matter if your file size is, is slightly bigger than another file size. You're not really saving anything. Give it nice, long, make sense names, um, and it will save yourself a lot of thinking time in the future. Um, MQ4 files are very small anyway. They tend to be, you know, they're only text files, so they tend to be less than, you know, 100 kilobytes. They're not big. They're not going to take up a load of space. So don't worry about being short on the number of characters in your in your code. And once you've declared the type and you've given it a name, um, you can then put a value into your variable. So as an example, um, here's where, how we would do that. We've said the type is going to be a string, which is a text variable type. We've given it the name, my name, because we're going to put my name into it. And we use the equal sign to put something into that variable storage container. So we're going to put the name Alistair 
in between the double speech marks because it's text, it's a string, into the my name variable, and then we're going to end that line as we always do with a semicolon. So now that we've had a little recap on variables, and I hope you're up to speed on that, but feel free to go watch the last video if, if that didn't make sense for you, uh, number three in the series. We're going to start to look at functions and how I see them really as kind of like code factories, if you like. So a factory is a, is a place that takes in raw material, it completes a process and produces an output. I think we all know that. Um, so in front of us, we've got a steel factory. So with a steel factory, we take in our raw materials, um, coal and iron ore being the main uh inputs for a steel factory and you know we take those and there are input materials our input we put that into our steel factory and that steel factory then completes a process with our raw materials and once that process is complete the factory then gives us an output which you know in this case is steel bars or steel tubes or i beams whatever it might be but you you, you get the idea we have on the right we've got our what we put into the process it completes the process and then we get an output on the left. So writing functions is a lot like um, that, very simple factories. So we've got our factory, our code factory in the middle, which is to calculate spread. We want to create a function uh, which is going to calculate, let's say, the symbol spread for us. So we need to give this, this factory some input. So we do that on the right hand side. And we're going to say we're going to put in the bid and the ask because that's what the, the code would need. That's what any code would need to calculate the uh, spread of a, a pair. You need to know what the bid and ask are to work out the difference. So the way you put that into your code, the way you would say that is you, you say calculate spread and then we're going to give um, two doubles because your bid and ask will like where the price is. So they're going to be have a decimal place in it. So they're going to have to be a number with a decimal place, which is a double. So we put double and I put P1 and that stands for parameter one. And I put double P2 and that stands for parameter two. It doesn't matter so much what the name is. In fact, it's probably better to give these two names something that's more readable to me. So in fact, what I'm going to put in is uh, calculate spread and I'm going to put double bid and double ask so that it makes sense to me, the coder, when I'm writing it, what, um, what I actually want to put into, um, into my code factory, my function. So once we've put our inputs into our code factory, our function, we get an output, which obviously if we want to, we have something that we want to calculate spread for us, we want to get an output, which is the spread. So in order to, to write that function, we would have to, on the left, we have to say what kind of value, what kind of data is going to come out as the output um, when that function completes. So in this case, we've got double because we're given spread spreads going to be a number with a decimal place so we're getting a number with a decimal place is going to come out of our factory um, we don't have to give this a name uh, we just have to say that the returned value um, the output from our code factory our function is going to be a number with a decimal place which is a double so we'll look at the function structure now so to create a function you it's, it's quite easy and you simply need to do the following, quite like creating variables. You first need to declare the type of variable that will be the output. So just as you saw before, on the left hand side, you're going to say it's what's going to come out, what's going to be the output, it's going to be a double, could be a string, could be any, any of the data types in MQL4, but you need to just declare that first so the computer, again, knows what it's expecting from this function. And if you, you can have functions which don't produce any output, so here's where we diverge from our analogy of a factory, it just completes a process. So if that's the case and you, you're not going to give any output, you can use the word void um, and, that, and the computer will know not to expect anything back from this function. So you can see here, we've this is our calculate spread. We're declaring that uh, the output on the left hand side over here is going to be a double um, and so it's simple enough and here you can see where 
the same, let's say we're writing a different function uh, in a different piece of code, different EA, but we're not going to get a value back from this. We're just going to complete the, the processes inside this bit of code. Um, so the computer, we tell the computer, don't expect any output from this function. Um, we're just going to write that as void. So after you've declared the type of output that you're going to get from your function, you need to then name your function, similar again to how you name a variable. And again, when you name functions, use something obvious and clear to you. Don't give it code names because it will be hard for you to read later down the line. Um, so here you can see I've got two functions which I've written. One is void calculate spread. You know, that's a nice easy name. I know exactly what that is. When I write that into my code and I read it later, I know exactly what that function is, is trying to do. This one, however, which is function calculate spread here, I've given it abbreviation, given it a number to maybe separate it from a different function. It doesn't make any sense. I'm, I'm going to have to go and read the code inside that function to figure out what's going on. So you know, when you're giving your names to things in your code, again, don't worry about the length necessarily, but do um, do give it a name that makes sense to you and you will understand. So the top one is the right way to do it. The bottom one, don't give it silly names like this. And the third thing you need to do is you need to tell the function uh, what type of input to expect as an, as an input, what type of data are, are, is going to be put in the um, is going to be put into the factory into the function, and you also here you do give the inputs names. Yeah, and the, the inputs into a function are called parameters, and you give them a name. The name doesn't have to be the same name as let's say a variable that you're putting into the function, uh, but it's a name again that just means something to you um, for for later when you read it. So um, coming back to our example, we're giving. We're putting in a double, it's expecting two inputs here. The first one is a double type, which is a bid. We've called it bid, and we've uh, put a, a comma to separate the two inputs. So we've got one input here, comma, and then we've got another input, which is the same type, it's a double, but it's going to have a different value. And we've given it the name ask here. So again, when we're reading it, um, we know what, what we're trying to do. Something that I like to do, which is just a quick tip, is when I create functions, um, I like to put this, a small p onto the inputs into, uh, into my function. So a p and then bid with a, a capital B just to separate the word. Uh, this is called camel case if you want to have a look at that. But the, the primary point here is I put the p here. p stands for parameter, and that just helps me keep separate. So I know that this... Uh, variable here and this variable here are inputs into this function and that uh, makes life a little bit easier further down the line. So um, once you've done that and you've declared and named your function and you've given it the inputs what to expect you can then write your code within curly brackets um, for for what you want this factory to do, what you want this function to do. Um, and this is one of the cases where you don't use a semicolon. So if I show you the example here, you can see we've we've named, uh, we've given it the output type, we've named our function, we've got two inputs here, and we've got a curly open bracket, and we're going to put our code in here, and we've got a curly closed bracket. So that's the open bracket, closed bracket, that's the start and the end of the process of the code for this fact for this function so every time we write into our code calculate spread it's going to run the code whatever's written in here which makes it really reusable and you can use it lots lots of times and it makes your code look really nice and neat um, but you notice here at the end um, here and in front of the curly brackets there is no um, semicolon so if you do put a semicolon there it's one of the things where you'll get an error for this so it's just one thing to check uh, but this is one of the exceptions where you actually don't put a semicolon equally in front of um, the curly brackets. The other thing to note as well, just um, what to know in advance, a common reason for an error when you compile um, one of your your codes is that you don't you you put an open bracket, but you don't put a closed bracket. So that's um, that's a common cause again for. Uh, for an error in your code. 
Uh, and the fifth thing is, you know, once you've written your code and you want to put something to the output to, to give back into the computer or to get back from your from your function, you use the return keyword. So uh, and the example here, so this is a complete function, double calculate spread. We put in the um, um, bid and ask and we return the ask minus the bid here. We do this calculation and we return it. And actually I've made a very small mistake here. Uh, it should say P ask and P bid here um, because we're using these two values to do this calculation. And what that means with the return um, keyword here is that um, wherever you wrote this function in your code, you're going to get the result of this calculation um, here, um, which of course will be a double, which is why those two have to match. So I'm going to go over to the meta editor now and we'll have a look at how we can use a function in our EA from the last lesson uh, to make it a bit more uh, neat, tidy and a slightly bit more readable. So we've jumped over to our uh, meta editor now. We've got the code um, from lesson three up on the screen. Uh, I'm just gonna start this one and I'm gonna save as, so um, as lesson four. So I don't override what we did in the last lesson. And you can see here, we had our fun our uh, code here in, in actually the on -tink, on tick function that I mentioned last week. So you can see here, this is actually an inbuilt function um, which doesn't return a value, so it's written as void, it's called on tick, and actually the terminal will call this function every single time a new price tick comes in. So the on tick function, we've got the two curly brackets, you can see there, and we've got uh, our code underneath. So um, I didn't actually comment uh, the code in the last one, which was, you know, poor of me, but uh, we'll, we'll do some commenting in this one as well. So you'll remember as well, if you go back to the last, last video, when we ran this EA, and if you've done this yourself, you'll notice that the although the, the, the it worked, it didn't really give us a value, um, which was very readable. We had to sort of figure out how many decimal places there were there. So we're going to we're going to use uh, a function. We're going to create a function now to do this uh, code, but also make it a bit neater. So the way we create a function, um, the first thing we do, we're just going to go below um, the on tick function. And we're going to create this section of code here. So we're going to say we want to return a double because we're going to return the spread. Um, we're going to call this function calculate spread. So we call this uh, function calculate spread, and we need to put some open and close brackets and tell them what uh, what the input could be. Now we could, of course, um, have no inputs and uh, start writing our code. Uh, here like this um, and that would be fine and there are some times when you don't actually need to put inputs into a function and you can start it like that but in this case we want to put in here our uh, bid and ask as uh, inputs to this function so we're going to uh, the first one we want to put in is the bid so the bid obviously is a price and it's got a decimal place so it's going to be a number and we're going to use the uh, we're going to call it p bid parameter bid and this, we're going to give another input, which again is a double, and we're going to call that p ask. So we've not put a semicolon on there, and we just open, got an open brackets, um, and then we've got space for our code. So what we want to do is we want to um, create a spread variable. So we'll just comment that, um, and we're going to give it the um, bid ask spread as a value okay so we put a comment there to explain to ourselves what we're doing so we create a spread variable and this is going to be a number with a decimal place in it um, and we're going to uh, call it the current spread as we did uh, in the last one so and that is going to equal p ask and you can see if i put p here uh, and then B, oh, it should come up as a, it does come up as a tool tip, um, which you can press return to. I'm going to end this line with a semicolon. So we've created a variable called the current spread, which is exactly what we did uh, last time. Um, and we could at this point return uh, that value then 
as, as that and that is our complete function uh, we've calculated the uh, current spread we've put it into that variable and then we've returned that variable but what we actually want to do now is we want to give the spread I think in a value that is um, readable to us so as you know um, you have um, uh, you know, uh, we've got our, our, when we calculate our spread like this, it, take, it takes one price away from another and it gives it as a, a, um, a number after so many decimal places, which is great, which is fine. But actually, when we're talking about spread, we usually talk about it in points. So we're going to, we're going to sort that out here by um, dividing um, the current spread by an inbuilt um variable so the way we're going to do that is we're going to say that the current spread and we're going to manipulate the current spread is now equal to um, the current spread but we're going to divide it by an input inbuilt variable called point so I've put an underscore point here and what point does is it will it will give you a number um, which is either and I'll put in the comment here let's put above it here so we'll divide by the point variable and we'll need then to uh, and, and, and the point variable excuse me um, it, and we'll turn over a value for if it's a if you've got a four digit broker it's going to give that value if it's a five digit broker it's going to give that value it's going to give you the smallest possible um, tick size on on your chart so if you divide your um, price spread um, by that value it's going to make it into um, a value that's uh, in points basically um, by the point variable so we're going to divide it by the point variable to give the spread in points so um, so if we do this then we will get a number which um, uh, will be in points rather than as price. Um, the last thing that we can do is we can actually use another inbuilt function here um, from the M meta editor from the MQL language, which is a really useful one called normalize double. So if we um, see right here, it comes up if I just write norm, the normalize double function. I'm going to type the open bracket and you can see a tooltip comes up and it, it actually shows you that the normalized double will give us a, it will return to us a double value and the input it needs is a value and um, uh, the number of digits uh, that we want it to be normalized to. And what that basically means is it's going to... Uh, it's going to normalize it to the to a number of decimal places. So uh, in this instance, because we're doing points, we've got our value in points now. We don't want any decimal places, so that would be zero. So our value that we're going to put in is the current spread, and we're going to give it zero digits. So we don't want anything after the decimal place. And then we uh, put here, it's going to return a value, so we need to get that value into another variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new, um, create a new variable, um, double. We're going to call it point spread, and point spread is going to be uh, normalized, a normalized version of the current spread. So I'll just take that there uh, and do that. So you can see now we've we've going to have. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, move the declaration of that point spread. You can see this is the thought process of somebody writing code on the fly. So we're going to create that variable there. We're going to make point spread actually the result of this one, and. Um, we're then going to normalize point spread because this is more like what you would do in your in your code. So um, and then once we've done that, we've we've made our point spread into the value of the spread in points. We've normalized it so it should not have anything after decimal place. And then um, we need to return point spread. So that is our complete code um, for this. So now we just need to use this in our uh, main. 
section of of um, of our uh, fun of our code of our EA. So we go back to the on tick function. Um, we can take this code out now, actually, and we now um, need to. So actually, I'm going to take that back. I'm going to keep that current spread declaration there. So we're going to now give that current spread a value, which we're going to use our new function. So the current spread is going to be equal to calculate spread. When we open brackets, it's going to show us what we've just created. So we're getting a double output, which is over here, and we want to put in the bid and the ask. So um, the bid um, is written as that, and it's one of the inbuilt variables in MQL4, and we're going to give it the ask too. So we're going to use that and uh, to complete that line, we put a semicolon. So now instead of having uh, the calculation directly in our um, code, we're going to use that. And actually, it's a bit more clever than that because we're actually going to get um, a value which is in points um, and is more readable. So we're going to get the value of the spread in points. Okay, so that's our code. So we're going to compile. We're going to check if there's any errors. And there aren't any. Any? That's good. So we've compiled that now. Um, it's in our folder. And I'm going to go over to my uh, terminal. And I'm going to try it out. Let's see if it works. So we go to our lesson 4 EA. We drag it onto our screen we've got no inputs yet there's not much information on here and let's see what we get so you can see here um, my ea is running it's not taking any trades it's not doing anything special but it is telling me that the current spread um, is rather good that's why i use global prime uh, is zero and if we have a look you, that should be maybe a bit larger than that. So we might have an issue with our code here because it's giving me zero and you can see it is a number of points here. So what I'm going to do, and this is part of the process, you find the problems, I'm going to go here and I just want to check I've not normalized the value out of existence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the comment to just take that line of code out. I'm going to recompile it um, so it's not going to do that normalized double and you can see when I've recompiled it It's actually giving me a value. So that was my bad with that one. We've got now a spread value um, Which is uh, what Between 1 and 10 points here. So you've got yourself a nice little EA that's going to tell you exactly uh, What the current spread is you can see there's a lot of decimal places over here. There's actually another function um, which we'll put in in the next lesson, which we can then um, bring this string uh, right down to a specific number of decimal places. Um, but we'll do that in the next lesson. So we're back now in presentation mode. I hope you found that bit of coding useful. Um, I know it's very simple. It's not a particularly special EA at the moment. But as we go through these lessons, we'll make it make it more and more useful. Uh, and, and it's part of the learning process. So I really do encourage you to do uh, this coding yourself. Don't just watch the videos. Have a go at writing this very, very simple EA uh, yourself, putting it on your chart and seeing if it works because you'll learn a lot through trial and error um, when coding. So we're looking at global and local variables now. So um, this is really important. We've talked about variables now. We've talked about functions. So we can now talk about the differences between global and local variables. Now, a global variable is uh, any it's any type of variable. It doesn't matter what the type or the name of the, uh, of the variable is, but it's usually declared, you usually name it right at the start of your code. You know, above any of the functions at the start of your code, you're going to usually put this um, there. And it can be accessed by any and all of the subsequent code. So it's, it's values that you can use um, throughout your code and it holds global things in the whole of your code, um, which is useful for things like constants or uh, values that you want to change by, by all the code. And that will make more sense as we go through it, but just know that all of your code um, can use the global variables. 
It's useful for holding key information that all of your EA needs, uh, like order tickets. You can sometimes use uh, global variables for that. Magic numbers, trade direction. There's lots of reasons why you would use global variables, but it's it pays not to use too many because it can get quite complicated. And just like uh, my input values for my functions, I like to use the small letter G as a, as a bit of a good habit for when I'm declaring my global variables because it just helps me distinguish it from any uh, local variables further down in the code and avoids me overwriting global variables uh, um, by accident um, further down the code. So an example uh, of declaring a global variable, exactly the same. There's nothing special about the declaration of it. Here we've just got double G order ticket. So I've just given it that um, small g at the start just to differentiate it from uh, a, a other variables further down in the code. Local variables, again, they're created and uh, declared in exactly the same way with names and uh, type, data types, um, but they're created within a function such as the onTick function. And that's what we used uh, earlier when we wrote our calculate spread and we wrote our code in our um, onTick function. Um, we did that and we use local variables. We created a local variable current spread and point spread, and they were local. And what that means is once that piece of code has run through between the curly brackets, those variables will disappear. You will not be able to use them in other functions, and you'll also not be able to use them uh, in, in other parts of your code, because as soon as that list of uh, instructions within a function um, is finished, those variables disappear, they get deleted. So, and that is useful, uh, it's, uh, but it sometimes uh, can be challenging. And one of the ways we get through that is, well, this is one of the reasons actually why we, in, we put input variables as parameters into our functions and we return output variables because it's a way of getting variables in and out because if we didn't do that, then they're gonna get deleted. So the way you get around that is you put them in and you take them out. Um, as input variables and return them as output variables as well. So that's all we have for today's video. Um, the next video, we're going to start to put some intelligence into our EAs. Uh, we'll have a quick recap on functions. Um, we'll have a look at if and else logic statements, which is really the beginning of decision making for your EA. Um, so it's where your EA starts to pick up some intelligence and starts to do some clever things. And we're going to make our um, EA useful-ish um, by using an if-else statement to do something with our spread calculation. Uh, it, I hope you've liked the video. If you have any questions, do drop it in the comment section below. I'll answer as many as I can, but feel free to answer each other's questions too. And as always, you know, we'll keep building this community together. Join the conversation on the new forum, uh, toolkitfortraders.com. Uh, if you sign up to the members area, totally free. Um, it's where all the source code and free A's and indicators will be, but also a place for you to ask questions, um, central place to ask questions about what you're struggling with. And, you know, if you've written this code yourself, you've tried to copy it, you know, um, that's a great place for you to... Uh, ask questions and maybe post your code and say, you know, why is this going wrong? I can't figure it out. You know, put it on the forum there. Um, as always, hold a date for your uh, diary, getting close now, but the 20th January 2021, the second EA for the channel is going to drop. I'm excited about this. Uh, this one is very different from what I normally do. Um, and uh, I'll have a, I'll see what you can do with it. And as always, if you like the video, it really, really helps me if you can click the like actually on your YouTube app or wherever you're watching this. Um, click the subscribe button so that you get uh, notifications that comes up when there's a new video. And if you have any questions or any comments, you know, please positive or negative, put them in the comment section below. Um, it's great to have feedback fr from everyone in the community. And as always, thank you very much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson uh, of the MQL4 programming tutorial. Um, keep safe and keep well. Mm -hmm.